welcome to the Focus on Goals podcast, where we provide inspiration for the next generation. With your host, D'Angelo from SCS Sports Coaching Specialists and Lee from Happy Days Photography. Let's get into the show. Ange, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you, mate. How are you? Yeah, mate, really well, thank you. Hey, everyone, thanks so much for waiting. Thanks for your patience. We, uh, we have a very a busy man with us today. So, how you been then, Ange? You all right? Yeah, I'm all good, mate. I'm really excited about tonight. Yeah, uh, me too. To do the podcast with, uh, with Lamana. Obviously, I've spoke about him before, but he's one of the, the best players I've seen live. And it'll be really interesting to, to hear his views and, and different bits that he's got going on at the moment. So, yeah. it, it'll be an exciting one tonight. Yeah, hopefully a little bit of a light-hearted uh, conversation based on what's going on tonight and every, the pressure that everyone seems to be under at the minute. Definitely. I think everyone was watching the news. Um, obviously, it's important for everyone at the moment, but it's um, such a scary time. The main thing is everyone just remains safe yeah. and, uh, and with their families. Yeah, mate. Yeah, 100%. I mean, we go on about, about it all forever, but I think we try and stay away from that, to be fair, tonight. Just very quickly, yeah. before we go into it, we've obviously launched the uh, we've launched Facebook page now, haven't we, for the podcast. So the podcast is out there. We've yep. got the Facebook page, which if anyone's watching, we'd love you to go and follow it. It is just Focus on Goals podcast. And all the interviews that we do and conversations we have will be uploading and putting out um, putting out on there, on YouTube, and obviously on your channel as well. So yeah. people can watch back and if it's a bit late, can show the kids because that's what we want to be, be doing, isn't it? I think the feedback we've had has been amazing as well. We've, yeah. actually had, um, we've actually been contacted by... You know, business people and football players that are actually asking to come on. So that's that's amazing. It's what we want. Yeah, it's what we want. It's really good. Yeah. And we had one earlier Sorry. in the week, didn't we? We did have we had a conversation with um, a guy called Tanner Hicks, who most yeah. people probably won't know through through this platform, but he manages properties and he does a lot of education on wealth and development. And the stuff that Tanner had to say was really relatable, wasn't it? I think that was the biggest word that came out of it. Was yeah, was really I think um, obviously doing. We don't just want to just do footballers. We want to go into business. And like you say, he was talking about wealth. And there's more to wealth than just money. Yeah. Uh, and flash cars. And um, success as well, what really, it takes. Really relatable to anyone that has a business. Um, so definitely have a listen. Yeah. I think one of the key takeaways from that conversation was um, was just our perception of what other people think of us. And how it doesn't matter how, how, how people think you are. We all feel yeah. a bit of the same about that. So, right. Let's, should we get into today? got yeah, 35 let's people let's watching the, the main man in. um so right we'll pull him pull him through and uh How are hello you? There. here How he is doing? here he is i'm doing good and i'm doing good angie how are you how's both of you how are you guys doing really well thank you really well yeah, really good lamana thank you first of all for coming on tonight because i know you're a busy man um and we really appreciate you coming on lots of children and adults will be watching tonight a lot of your fans so uh, we really appreciate you coming on yeah, really good. Thank really. you very much, man. First of all, I would just like I would like to apologize, for, you know, um, <laughs> for the time and all that. But um, we're Not here problem. now, and um, let's uh, let's have fun, let's enjoy, let's talk. Yeah, let's talk. <laughs> let's talk. <laughs> so yeah, no, don't worry about the time. We we appreciate you being here. It's absolutely fine. We've um we didn't have anywhere else to be, to be honest. So we're all alright. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> How are you finding it? <laughs> yes. We. <laughs> we're... <laughs> Everyone's really excited about tonight. So I think the main thing we want to get across tonight, Lamana, that obviously there's a lot of things you had to go through in your life to, to become a yeah. professional footballer. Yeah. Um, and just going to give people an insight, a real good insight on, on you know, how, how you made it into football um, and your foundation later on as well. We'll talk about your foundation back in Congo as well, if you're happy mm. to do so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fine by me, mate. That's fine by me. So if we um if we start off, how did you get into football? Was it was it something you was great at straight away, or was it you into other sports? Do you know Do you know what? Um, I was into another sports, which was gymnastics. My dad was a footballer, though. Um, but you know, he was a good player. I think football. Well, what I saw, obviously, he was a good player. But when they used to win games. Um, obviously, he used to come back home drunk and start in trouble with mom and everything. So that's all I remember. You know, I know he's a good player, but when you talk about football, for me, it was like, like 
or after the game you get drunk because of alcohol and yeah. you'll come home and start causing trouble. So that's the only thing I remember. So and because of that, I said to myself, I don't want to play football. I'm not going to um, never drink alcohol. To these days, I don't drink alcohol, as you know. And I says that I'm never going to be no, not a violent person, you know, because yeah. I think I was just causing my dad to do things that he'll wake up in the morning and not know, because there'll be times he'll come in and we're ignoring him and he'll just pick up the TV and then just smash it. And then the really? next day in the morning, the next day in the morning, he'll be like, who did this? And it was like, <laughs> oh, he couldn't remember it. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, football for me was that side of it. I didn't really like it, but, you know, sometimes the big, the big men up there, you know, always have a different plan for us so yeah. I came in England I wanted to play football I wanted to do gymnastics but it didn't work out for me I remember my school teacher who was you know friend, bless him without him I probably wouldn't be into football so he saw me playing football uh, in, a, in a playground and then he just I remember him saying to me that you know what forget your gymnastics you're, you're playing football so he started putting this in my head yeah. he put this into my head like you're going to be a football you're going to be a football but he took me to um he took me to Leighton Orient. He took me to West Ham, and another team. He took me to. They didn't. Uh, I went to Luton, and they yeah. said I wasn't good enough. Cause, but the only thing was when I used to go there, they used to put, they used to put me with underage kids to play with underage, and I hated it. Yeah. I didn't want to play with no underage kids, so I wanted to play with big players. Yeah. So I never. I, I, I didn't. I didn't play serious, so I didn't. I didn't make it, and then obviously. Yeah, I end up minding my business going to uh, college and then yeah. it happened at uh, a college game we played um, in the semi-final if I'm not mistaken uh, we played uh, a, a Colchester College yeah and then the, ref the, the referee happens to be your dad <laughs> Mr. Jeff Harris yeah <laughs> I, <thought laughs> Jeff, so I remember a do very dodgy ref <laughs> I obviously know that Obviously, he was a scout. He was a scout. You know, yeah. one thing for me, I, I was blessed enough. I thank God every day I was lucky that football was on my parents, even though my dad played football. My dad didn't get me into football. I was yeah. lucky enough to to be uh, to be loved or taken by, you know, have so many father figures. You yeah. know, I grew up in, I left Congo. I came, I was living with my aunt and so I was naughty and then I started living with my uncle. So, I start like you know, obviously doing what kids would do, mess around with people. Yeah. But I was lucky enough to have all those those parents used to love me. So I went on from Mr. David had from school, took me like his own son. And then I met your dad, Ange. You know, not because you're there, because like you have to understand, Ange, Angela is not just a mate of mine. Angela is like my little bro. I see. No. I know Ange from like Ange, small Ange. <laughs> Massive. You know, um, <laughs> so. The, so 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 Jeff Jeff I remember him in that game was lose I didn't even start that game I remember because those times that I used to find football so boring so he was losing two 0 <laughs> and then it happened it happened uh, yeah it was, it was I used to find it boring that it happened that um um that um half time my four K I told my my teacher I said the I told my teacher listen I want to come on I want to come on and he said are you sure I said yeah I want to come on. And then I came on and I scored a goal. I remember scoring a goal. And then Jeff, Jeff said to me, oh, that was lucky, mate. <laughs> you can score a goal. Like, you, can, you think you can score another goal? So I thought, hey, this guy really <laughs> trying to play. You think I'm, yeah. you think I'm normal player. So, so I took the ball again and I scored. And he says, it goes, oh, surely you can't do it three times again. <laughs> and then, Obviously, and then after that, yeah, and then after that, obviously he was I don't know he saw something in me probably another person saw, yeah. and uh, he said to me that oh I would like to ask you I invite you to Colchester and I was like nah I've been in Leighton Orient I've yeah. been in uh, West Ham and they never take me so what makes you think that you know I'm gonna make it and yeah. uh, he says no no you need to come and obviously he used to call you know Jeff actually he's. He used to uh, contact the school teacher, and the school teacher contact was calling my house all the time. Literally, my dad had my uncle had to kick me out. He said, yeah. "Oh, come on, just go, 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 go." Yeah. And and you know what? I've never, you know, it was for me. Not because Angela is there. Like Jeff took me like his own son. Like he took me to his house. Like you know, not like or someone going for a trial. 
I don't know whether it's like that with different people, but this is me. This is the person. Now I'm talking about me. What he did to me, like yeah. for him taking me there and took me like his son, and it made me feel so comfortable. Like he was amazing for me, you know. Um, and obviously, <clears throat> it was good. It didn't click at first because I was still had discipline problem, like late yeah. and no. things like that. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, and uh, yeah, and he, you know, he passed me on to another great man, which was Mickey Cook. But even though I was working with Mickey Cook a little time in the youth team, not that much, but I was still coming home to, to Jeff Parab, you know. So he really was there for me. Even though I remember one game I was supposed to sign the contract, but I was late, really late. And then yeah. they, you know, they told me, oh, they told me they kicked me out. They told me, oh, no, 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 you're not serious. So I yeah. went back to. To, to my school and then and then I remember but I remember um going to, when I went to school it was too late everyone else is kind of you know you have to do your work experience so you have to fill up your work experience so I didn't do mine so the only last job to do was McDonald's <laughs> so yeah. I remember I remember going to McDonald's I was so, I, to be fair I was so excited if McDonald's like you know what I'm gonna eat burgers I'm gonna make burgers and I'm gonna have all my friends come in and, you know, I remember going there the first day and I thought I was going to cook things and they told me go and clean toilets. Really? So I was like, oh, yeah, I was like, rah, I'm not cleaning the toilet. But yeah. you know what? I went, I think that's when, that was a turning point for me. What part of, what part of something? Yeah, it was a turn because I remember sitting in our toilet for an hour. Yeah. And I, started, I just started thinking, oh, I was in Colchester. I was staying in a family. I was free. It's not like when I was staying with Jeff, uh, with Jeff it's like uh, restricted me, telling me, you know, like, you got to do this. It never forced me. He gave me that freedom. I was enjoying football. And I just started start going through my mind. And yeah. I just went out. You know what? I said, you know, I'm going to try and give her, you know, trying to call him again, trying to see if he can give me another chance. Yeah. And I started calling him every day. I started calling him Jeff. I started calling him. And Mick was where I said I need a chance. And he was saying, no, Steve, I think back then Steve Wigno was, uh, was the uh, the first team manager? Yeah. I was like, no, no, yeah. He was like, no, no. So actually, Jeff and Mickey put the, you know, they put the life online, you know. So they said, okay, you're gonna come, but you can't let us down. You know, you yeah. can't. You know, you go. And then I remember going back there. I never looked back since. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, I used to have by all these youngsters who probably don't know. We used to have these old trainers back then. We used to call it LA game. <laughs> they had lights at the back. <laughs> It was like it, it, it was like it was like a basketball shoes. Yeah. So it was like high. So I remember one in preseason, one preseason, we were running up the hills. So I was I was <laughs> I was running with my shoes, my basketball shoes. And I remember Mickey said, "Wow, if this guy can run quick with his basketball shoes, with imagine with, <laughs> you know, with a running." So I end up buying me a running shoes, and and Mickey, the best thing Mickey ever did. Another yeah. really turning point for us, like youngsters, he took us to to a factory work. I think yeah. Jeff also was there. Um, we went in there from seven in the morning to seven at night, yeah. packing bags. Yeah, it's packing bags. Yeah, no, but Mickey, that, that's when I left because obviously when I, I after McDonald's, I start calling. I was given a chance, and I stopped. I had to make a decision between uh, carry on college or go into football and then learn football. So I went back. I went I went to football. So but Mickey just talk us like youth team. You know, sometimes we was taking things for granted in a youth team. Don't forget in a youth team back then we used to clean boots yeah. for discipline. Yeah. So we like each each youth team player you had your first team player that you have to look after his boots and everything. So yeah. and that was part of the discipline. And there were still some players and me also we still wasn't taking football all that serious, you know? Yeah. So Mickey Cook did the best thing by taking us to a factory work and seven in the morning, seven in the night, packing. From then, that's, that's when we realised, damn, you, we're actually lucky to be footballers. Yeah. Yeah. We're actually lucky, like, this is real world. There's yeah. people that yeah. work every day doing this and all we're doing is playing football and, and we're getting, listen, I used to get one, pen, one pound back then for my dad as school dinners and feel like to eat dinner and then suddenly I'm getting a 
a little 45 pound, you know, back then with the youth. So I, it was like, for me, it was all new. I used to buy clothes and then suddenly they're giving you clothes to wear. Yeah. So I'm thinking, oh, I, I love this. This, you know, is I, I, <laughs> this is a great life. But I was lucky enough to still have people. Like I said, I, I, I always mention Jeff too much. Why? Not because I is there because I'm talking about he you you have to realize I didn't have my father with me. And I move on. I left my friends and things to come to a different area to live with someone who took me never once uh shot at me in a bad way. He always make sure he opened up my eyes to see you know the life you have. He such a good man man so you, like I always say to people that I can never talk about football without mentioning Mr. Hat, my school teacher, uh, Je- uh, Jeff Harrop, Mickey Cook, you know, but why Mr. Hat and Jeff Harrop? Because they believe in me. They put, they, put, they put things into my head that no one else did yeah. on football level. You know, and, 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 you know, I thank God for that. Every day I, I always say I'm glad I did have those people. You know, like I had the guidance. I say I had people that guided me to, to get where I am. And then obviously they make it cook and, and people like that. And Steve would not giving me a chance. So, yeah. So it was really, that was my coach's life. And it was the best time I had. The best time I enjoyed with the youth team. You know, I enjoyed. Oh, it was a great time. Really, really great. I love, I coach. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's my heart. You know. Lamora, when heart. you... When did you break into the first team? How long was you at coach until you broke into the first team? It wasn't that long, you know. Um, I, I didn't, because, but I, you have to understand, Ange, also, when I left, you know, not many people knew this, because I grew up in London, with uh, the people that I grew up with wasn't doing things leg- like legally. They was doing yeah. really bad things, you know. So I had curfew that my, my, my uncle always used to give me eight o'clock I have to be in. So yeah. all my friends not doing good for, so I had in my mind like I needed every time I tell him like stop doing this they wouldn't listen to me yeah. so I had to make I had to find a, a way to get to like to pass my message my message to come across so football was like football saved like it was a way for me to be able so when I came I remember, you know it was crazy in school people knew me as Lomana like Angie's calling me Lomana now that's the name yeah. that they Lomana that's what, and that's why if a person calls me Lomana, I have to stop and listen yeah. to him. But when yeah. someone calls me Loa, I know they just know, oh, okay, this person. He yeah. still knew me as Lomana. Yeah. So obviously, when I came to coach you, sir, because when I was young, before my granddad passed away, I was blessed. So this was my own. My dad told me this story. He says, oh, you didn't see your grandfather, but he saw you. He blessed you. He actually said that you're going to lift the family name. I'm going to, basically, my grandfather said I was going to be a better footballer then you know I'll play football than my dad. Yeah. And now and my my dad kind of remind me of that. So when I came to Colchester I say, okay, I'm not gonna put Lamar now. I'm gonna put Loa Loa. Yeah. To, you know, for this memory of my granddad. And whenever whenever I used to go, you know, uh, like uh, weekends they used to let us go home. So yeah. sometimes weekends you so I'll go back to London and all my friends would be like, oh there's this player Loa Loa you're supposed to be a good player. They're talking about him being this. And I used to say to my friend, I am Loa. They say, no, you're not. You're Loa. I, I used to say, they never, they, they never used to believe me. I say, I'm Loa. They say, yeah, we know you're good, but this Loa, Loa, <laughs> it's, it's, it's only until they actually saw me. And then they say, oh, you are Loa. I say, I've been telling you guys for <laughs> time that I am in this population. But so I, I, went, I went in Portsmouth. I went in Colchester with the mind that I need to make it so I can, so my friends can actually pay attention to me. Yeah. You know, I remember when I went to Colchester, I said to the youth team, like, I said, you know what? I'm not here to play youth team. I'm here to play first team. And um, the first, the first time, the first time I'll play for the first team, I'll score. And they all look at me like I was crazy. <laughs> I was, they were laughing at me. But I, but I had my, I had my, I had my ambition as well because I really wanted to make it. So, Going there, I didn't have enough time with youth team. Yeah. Because I didn't envision, my vision wasn't about the youth team. I really put my, my mind, you know, when I went back and Mick gave me this opportunity and put, and him and Jeff, they put, 
the life online, so I had to perform. I had to call. Yeah. And, I, and I did, and then I was given a chance. So I didn't stay that long in the youth team. I don't th- even think I stayed a year in the youth team. Really? So, uh, you got thrown yeah. straight into the deep end. Yeah, um, I was given that chance. Uh, like you said, Steve would not believe in me and Mick, Mick was even Jeff to push me. They saw something that I didn't see. Uh, no one else saw in me, so they gave me that opportunity. And every single thing that I, I said, and it did happen. Like, I remember my first game. Hey, I used to go in town, walking around in town. No one really offered you or say anything, but my life changed in 15 minutes. I went to play this. I was given. I, I came on. I scored the goal. And the next day, I'm going to town. It's like everybody just comes. I was like, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lamar, do, do you used to get nervous and stuff when you played, or was you always really <coughs> a very, very confident person? Do you know, Ange? One thing. That's why I said I was lucky to have. Like when I say this, is what I say, you know, like I say, your dad really played a big part in my life. And Mick Wadsworth, you know, like they, uh, Mick, uh, Mick Cookie, for him, Cookie, and uh, they really, they made me, they put something in me. I, I never was scared on the pitch. Right. I, 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 it's not, you know, sometimes you can have, it's not arrogance, it's confidence. Like, I don't know who I learned, because also there was another guy, uh, uh, what's his name, Adrian. Adrian yeah. had me working my left foot. So I really had people that believe in me. And you, they put things into my head that I'm telling from school days, you have Mr. Hart and one of my best friends, Michael, Michael, that they put it, I knew, I literally, it, it, it's, I, I always knew I was, I, I knew, when I was on that pitch, it was like, no one can touch me. That's the mentality. I, really? I, I didn't say it, I didn't say it, but I perform I, I, on a pitch, that's how you give me the ball, there's no way you're taking it off. <laughs> and they made me, they made me believe this, so and and I and I always saw myself as an entertainer, yeah. you know. Cause and I remember when I first did my backflip and thing, and I think I don't know if you, I think it was Jeff, like he said to me that hey, every time you have to keep doing that, <laughs> we're just gonna go do that. <laughs> so, you know, um, so I never was. Well, we're on the backflip. I think now's probably a good time. I'm, I'm just gonna play a little clip about the Arsenal goal. You'll probably remember it well. It's where the backflip. You did the backflip. And uh, there might have been an injury. Yeah, it was for Portsmouth, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, you know, it was funny. Was, you know, I've never, I think, the, first of all, the boots, I, the, the boots I was wearing, it was the first time for me to wear, like, because uh, I was sponsored by Amber, so by then, I think it, uh, it finished, so I, I wanted to try different boots. So a friend of mine gave me this, uh, um, I think it was Predator. I did it. And I'm never used to my feet, wasn't comfortable, but I wanted to try and see because we was talking, I was talking to them. But I, and I remember I just came back from an injury. And Harry, Harry was telling me, <laughs> Harry, Harry told me, I don't want you to do that. Don't do that because we're fighting for relegation. I said, I, I say, I'm not going to do it. I promise I'm not going to do it. But when you score a goal, you, I, I, I don't even remember what happened. My mind, I look, hold on, you score, we're playing Arsenal. One of the best teams. And we're fighting for relegation. Nobody believed in us. But everyone knew that we were going to lose. And one, they were beating us 1-0 and I scored 1-1 towards the end. And I just got overexcited. But the thing is, it wasn't the back flip. It's where I did the back flip because it's so hard to explain to a person. Only a person that done that does gymnastics will understand. Just before doing the cartwheel, the place where I did it, it was it was quite a little bit muddy. It was like it was wet. They put the so as I went to do it, just be, before doing a cartwheel, my, I twisted my ankle. <laughs> so my ankle yeah. already twisted. Yeah, just but in a position I was. There was no way I could stop. Because as you can see, I was already, my body was, so there was no way I could have come back. So, <laughs> so to myself, I thought, okay, I'm going to go, but style it out. <laughs> it's it's way. So if, if you saw my landing, yes. I actually used one foot first and then the second. And I tried to, you, if you see the, the, the expression on my face, even when Mighty Teller, I remember Mighty Teller coming to hug me and lift me. 
as you can see me, I was actually biting my tongue because it was so painful. I had to, yes, I was in pain, so I had to hold it like that. And I tried to pretend like, like Harry, like I tried to pretend like there was nothing wrong. So I even played little five minutes just to try to make it, but oh, I was gone. <laughs> <laughs> I was gone. La, Lamana, you know when you was, um, you was at Colchester, I think obviously yeah. your, your life changed, but... When you who was the first person to you recall about obviously the Newcastle deal? You must have literally been in so much shock. Like, how did it come about? You know, you know, it was it was because I, I actually thought I was going to um, I actually thought I was going to Tottenham. Okay. It was like actually Tottenham that uh, that uh, you know actually put one point something, and then obviously on the way. But don't forget when uh, I think it was Steve. No, before when Steve Wigner went, um, I think it was uh, Mickey Wordsworth. There was a coach, Mickey Wordsworth, who came, yeah. um, and he pro. He, I remember one day we were playing because I, I I didn't like his character at first. I just thought, ah, oh, because whoever Steve Wigner went, I thought, oh, this is gonna be another, you know, because we're fighting for relegation. I said, this guy, the way he walk, I just I just didn't have this good feeling. And I remember we played one game. If I if I'm not mistaken, that was South End or someone by there. I'm not, and we was losing. And I remember half, but we was playing really bad. And I didn't really. I I think when Mick came, and I believe in this energy. I believe in like sometimes you can grab energy from. So, but I wasn't. I wasn't getting that energy, good vibe from him. Yeah. And I was losing, so I wasn't performing because you know sometimes, yeah, you know if you're not really good with the coach, it kind of. It shows on the pitch. It's, it can affect you. It affects you. Yeah. And I was like, I was one of those players. This is what uh, Jeff and Mickey did well. They had their arms around me. Yeah. And that arms around me took me to another level. Yeah. Really. So yeah. when Mickey came, and that's what Steve Wigner did as well. And when Mickey came, because um, he didn't do that, so I, my vibe wasn't good. So I didn't really want to perform too much. Even though I love the club, I love the people there, but I, I, felt, I, I felt lonely at times. Yeah. You know, um, so you can see even when I was with him, I, I, I used to go in age to age when or train, wanting to train with the youth team, but they wouldn't let, they wouldn't let me because I had to be with the first team and I wasn't enjoying the first team. So when he came, I remember we were losing that game and then half time we go in and he <laughs> told everybody be like, he said, okay, everyone out and Lua stay. When I'm telling you, I had my guards up. I <laughs> <laughs> He's coming in. <laughs> I, was, I was ready to like kind of fight, but then that's when he changed me. He put around me, say, "Hey, you are my, you are like my son. You know, yeah. I came here, you know, to enjoy football, to to do really well, and you can help me stay up in, in this league. You know, I'm here for you. Yeah. Don't think because uh, sometimes I do that. I'm just trying to teach you to become. You know, I know, I know what I, you have." And I know you can be better. Help me stay up in this league and I'm going to go to a better club. And if I go, I'll come back for you. And yeah. that's when everything changed for me. So once once I had that arms around and then I started, they love again, start enjoying. And then I remember he went to Newcastle. So he's the one that used to tell, said Bobby Robson to come and watch me. So he really? says, uh, yeah. and I remember, yeah. So, and I remember, I remember our last game. I remember we are playing, uh, we was playing Queen's Park Rangers. Yeah, yeah Chris, uh, and then we, uh, Steve Witch didn't want me to play. I said, why? Why am I? I said, I want to play. He goes, no, no, you can't play. I said, Steve, I want to play. He says, oh, no, no. Then I forced it. I said, I need to play. And I, I think that was my last game, and I scored a hat-trick. And, uh, yeah, I scored. And I remember the next game after that, I wanted to play again. He said, no. He said, you're, gone. you're, not, you're no longer a player. I said, what do you mean I'm not a coach? I said, you're gone, man. We're selling you. I said, no. I said, I don't want to go. I want to stay in really? said, It's not my... Yeah, he says, it's not my choice. You need to go. I said, what do you mean? Go, like, go, go. He goes, yeah, as we're talking now, you're not a player. And wow. I, I remember crying. I, I was really so... I was I was really hurtful because I, I was... Did he the club you were going to? No, nah, he didn't tell me. I was just... I was heartbroken. Really? I was like, yeah. Yeah, because I, I post my... Post, Colchester was everything for me. Colchester, yeah, I learned. Lot, yeah. I, I changed me. Like, I used to hang around with, uh, like, no wrong people. My friends, but I was doing bad things. I used, I, I used to buy things. I came to Colchester. Um, I'm living in a very good place. And 
I have good people around me. I'm, I'm in show. I'm football. You're doing things you, like you really. I start loving football. So then suddenly, you know, and and not only that, the first teamers used to take me like their own brothers. You know, a, a lot of people really did look after me. The Joyce, Jason Diesel, Dave, yeah. uh, David Gregory, uh, Doug, Doug was there. Doug, Lucky. Um, I can go on. So, mm. yeah. so for me to to me to be told that you're no longer like, if it was up to me, I'll say yeah. no. Really? It wasn't up to me. That's amazing. Yeah. I knew one. I knew one day I, I wanted to go and play higher. I knew one day I'm gonna play higher, but I didn't know that it happened so soon. Yeah. I, I, I was still I was still enjoying. I was still learning. Because in coaches that I played the football, I know nobody taught me football. I just came into it with with a blessed skill that God gave me. So I was just playing, I was playing park, like street football. Yeah. So I had that freedom. You know, there was times that I was doing, there was times I'll make mistakes, but instead of someone shouting at me or the players, they was just encouraging me. So I, it was like, coach was, that was like a heart for me, you know, it's like, so yeah. to leave it, was, I was, I, I, yes, I remember the coach, uh, like my uncle calling me, the agent saying, oh, yeah, we got Tottenham. We're on our way to Tottenham. So, oh, it was a, it was a, it was a long way, man. So I remember we going, and I'm just thinking that oh, leaving all these people, like, is our life is changed, you know? Like, yeah. I'm supposed to be excited and happy to yeah. be going to a Premier League, but I, 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 I didn't like it. Really, that's crazy. So crazy. So we, so we was going to Tottenham, and then suddenly I, I go. I remember getting a call from Mickey uh, Wordsworth. Say how are you? How are you feeling? And I say yeah, I'm okay, not bad. I, I'm going to um. Oh, and then he says, I says okay, I'll get back to you. And then suddenly I know I used to live in London. I'm from Forest Gate. Tottenham yeah. is not far from. So I knew, I knew the distance between Colchester and uh, London. But yeah. It seems that like, it seems that like the, the 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 journey wasn't you know it wasn't stopping. We was going. I, at times I felt like I was going back to half. Yeah. <laughs> I was time for a club in Africa for So yeah, so and then we end up going up no, um, you know, and yeah, so I, that was it. It was like, like I say, a few, a few more. I, I never was even when I was in Newcastle. Back then, I was happy. I saw Mick Wordsworth, and obviously my player that I look up to was Ronaldo. Phenomenal. I knew say Bobby Robson coach him. I knew. It can take my, you know, change my game to and take it to another level. But my heart, my mind was still in coaches because you yeah. go into you, you sign for a club that you have all these professionals, <clears throat> and the legends. But yeah. I had my friends, like the big brothers that I used to look up to, like the Dukes and those, those are my teammates. But they also like people that used to help me. So yeah. We became like friends. Yeah. We can joke, we can have fun, they can turn around and change towards me, like to teach me a lesson, to be disciplined. But then you're going to this place where you're professional, you have to look after yourself. Yeah. No one's there to look after you. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So I had people that I can reach to, but now I didn't have no more people. I'm like me, it's like me now. Yeah, and you're, you're, you're you have to become a man. It was very, yeah, so it's very, very difficult. There was no Jeff Harrop. There was no my little bro, uh, Angela there. There was no uh, Steve Wick, no KK Opara, no Dukes, like people that I was seeing every day, none of them. So it's now you're in Newcastle, in hotel firstly. You don't know. My uncle was there for a little while, then he had to leave. So you're basically there yourself. But, yeah. you know, um, but then again, uh, afterwards, I met Kieran Dyer. Kieran Dyer was the best thing for me, man. Kieran. Kieran taught me, took me under his wing, taught me everything I knew again. So, yeah, it was sad at then, but then I met Kieran Dye and Sir Bobby, oh, Jesus Christ, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. He yeah. was like a, he was like a grandfather figure, man. He was amazing. Lombardo, really, you, know, you know, before we go into, into more about Newcastle, is it all right if we take a few questions from Lee, from a lot of culture fans are on it today? Yeah, yeah, we've got a couple of, yeah, a couple of questions that come through. Um, so, Mark... Yes. Lamano, Mark, Mark has said, uh, did Colchester ever try and re-sign you? 
Uh, you know what? Um, when I uh, when uh, I spoke few time with Joe Dunn, okay, I think Joe Dunn was a coach there, and I really wanted to come back. I oh, I always says in my mind like if I want to finish football, I want to finish my football in uh, coaches. That was my first choice, if not Portsmouth. Right. So I really wanted to come back, and but I think there was a coach there that. Um, after Jordan left, it was kind of difficult, so I didn't know who. Because I really, I was really looking forward to come back and just to, to perform, and, you know, just to finish my career there. And yeah. that, that was a dream of mine. Yeah, fantastic. Um, and we've got one also from Daza, a guy called Daza. He's asking, um, what was your highest point in your football career, and what was also the lowest point, and how did they both affect you mentally? Quite a deep one, that. Wow. <laughs> highest point in football like, but you know every like <clears throat> every teams I play I always have something like a story like um to go with it my lowest point would be losing uh, uh, in football it, it was funny it affected me I was affected when I lost my son um I was in Portsmouth um Playing for Portsmouth, I was in the national team uh, duties in, in, I'll never forget this, in Egypt okay. in 2006. And then I, 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 when I, I find out the, the news about my son passing away, he was yeah. 18 months. Um, yeah, I remember coming back. Uh, we played uh, uh, Manu. Uh, but I, I had the t shirt inside. Uh, like with the message of my kid, yeah. Um, my son, but I, I think that was probably that was also my best game I played for me in Portsmouth because we played, <clears throat> we play uh, my new and I did, did everything so I can score. I, I literally done everything to score a goal, but it didn't happen. I remember Chris Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo score a free kick, unbelievable goal. But after the game. I think Sir Alex Ferguson did an interview and says, even though you gave Ronaldo a man of the match for the goal he scored, but there was only one man of the match, and that was Lua Lua. And for me, that meant a lot. Yeah, that's amazing. All the players, I remember, I remember Van Nistelrooy, uh, Rooney, I remember Ferdinand, they all came to me. They say, wow, they say, I don't, he said, you should play like this all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I remember they gave me the jersey as well. They said, and, and to have a fellow a fellow uh, player to say that uh, even though he got it, but he didn't deserve it. There was only one player. It was like Lua against Man United. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, very, so very, I was very, very proud moment. So, wow. But the highest point football ever gave me, highest point in football, I'll say respect. From your, okay. your, there's nothing that any players will tell you to get a respect, to be respected by your fellow players. Yeah. It's amazing for me. I remember, I, I tell you, I remember in, 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 in Portsmouth, we're playing Chelsea game and <clears throat> I was injured, but they have to, um, they, they, they had to do, you know, like when you have to train before a game just to see your fitness test. Yeah. I had to do a fitness test and uh, it was important, a newspaper. Then. So when obviously Chelsea came and we had a place in, in, inside our stadium where you sit down and just watch TV if you don't want to be outside so you can watch it from inside. So I remember when I done the fitness test, I fell, so I couldn't play. But Mourinho actually did his team, like he had me at the focus points to be marked. Okay. Um, by, I think, yeah, so to had like, I, I remember Essien or something to mark. So I sat in our room, I was gutted because we're playing Chelsea. Yeah. So, and I'm, I'm the one that always make jokes to people, you know, by slapping people. I like to have fun, basically. <laughs> and I was sitting there, gutted, and I, I see someone's like, kind of tap my head. So I was like, I didn't follow, because I knew I was probably one of the guys, or Griffin, Andy Griffin, who I like to joke yeah. about too much. <laughs> so I, and I see, second time somebody hit me, because I was mad, because I wasn't playing. Yeah. I say, hey, stop it, I'm not in a good mood. But I didn't look. And then the third time, I was like, go, oh, what the... And I look, and it was Mourinho. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, oh. And he says, oh, I heard, you're, I heard you're injured. I say, yeah. He said, good. You're not playing against me. He says, so you're not playing against me. But I hope you get well and get fit. And, yeah. you know, to play another game, you're, you're a very, very good player. And for Mourinho to say that to me. Yeah. 
Yeah, so that respect like, is, is important, yeah. isn't it? So I also do Sorry, Andrew, go again. Should we do another one? Yeah, let's go one more. Um, we've got one from Liam. Liam is saying, who's the best manager that you've played under and why? Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I, I'll say, tough, uh, tough, tough. you know what? It's very tough. Because Roberto Carlos was very good. He lets you play. For, but I'll say, I, I'll go for, I'll go for Harry. Okay. Harry is between is between Harry and Ian Holloway. Go on, why? Harry, Harry, you know, like that. You know, I, I'll always go back to the beginning again. Like you talk about Mickey, uh, Jeff Harry, and Mickey Cook put me. Harry made me believe when I'm on the pitch, nobody's better than me. It didn't matter who I'm playing against. It didn't matter if I'm playing against Manchester United, Arsenal. I, on that page, in my mind, I was the best player on the page. Yeah. That's what Harry made. The but that's me. Imagine what he did to the other players as well. So you had like 11 players thinking that uh, you're best. So that Harry made, Harry, Harry was, Harry pushed me to do skills. Right. Hey, go on, Harry, go and play. Harry, Harry pushes you to do skills. And, you know, when a player comes on trial in Portsmouth, Harry always changes training, like <laughs> the way you do training. He always have one on one because you want to see what quality you have. Okay. So yeah. Harry had this. This I always say: if I become a coach, I'll do the same thing as Harry. I'll always play four four two. I'll always like defenders defend, attackers attack. Yeah. That's Harry's tactic. Really? He's not. He's, he's never uh, be afraid. Oh, we're playing Manu. You got to defend. No, <laughs> this is how we play. Do your job. They're gonna beat us. That's how we play. Just go and play football. Take on players one on one. Louis, that's he used to call me Louis. <laughs> come on, come on, Louis, man. Do this and do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, I'm not see nothing. That's not the Louis. I know. Come on, <laughs> you know what I mean? So he was pushing you. Like he was. Bring, he, he had a way to bring the. He had a way to to bring the best out of you. So Harry, yeah, Harry was like. And like I say, it was similar to Ian Holloway. Ian Holloway used to call me, Ian Holloway used to call me, because uh, he loved Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. He loved Barcelona so much. And literally, when he used to watch a game, like he watched Barcelona, and he'll come the next day for training, and he, he used to want to play like Barcelona. So you have, you're like, you're like, you're Messi. And this one is, uh, like, you have uh, Matt Phillips. You say, this one's like Iniesta. This one's like, so that's how we used to, if you look, if, when I was in Blackpool, <clears throat> we didn't really have strikers. We had obviously Kevin Phillips, right? When he didn't play, so I was the main striker kind of up front, but he used to tell me to drop deep to get the ball. So we had uh, like wingers like Tom uh, Tom Ince on the yeah. other side, Matty Phillips. So when I used to drop deep, they just run. <laughs> run forward, from they knew I, Yeah, they knew I can turn with the ball. They knew I can pass yeah. the ball. So, so Ian Holloway also gave me that belief and but Harry for me, Harry was come on, Louis. <laughs> he used to tell, he used to go to, he used to, because me and Yakubu was good partner, he really, because we wanted to be like uh, Andy Cohen, Dwight York. Yeah. So he used to say, because me, you know, I was more laid back, I used to, I was not disciplined enough, I just used to be late in everything, you know, so he used to tell Yakubu, like, go and speak to him, get him to win us a game, you know, get him to win us a game. That's okay. what he used to say to <laughs> you know, uh, you know when you so so when you went to Newcastle, obviously you you went to a Premier League club, a big club as well, one of the biggest clubs in the Premier League. Did you? Yeah. Did you think to yourself, I've got to change my ways. I've got to become more disciplined. I have to look at my diet. I have to make sure that I'm on time. You know, because you were playing yeah, with such uh, good players. You know, and one thing I always. I always tell I, I didn't I didn't really talk football that serious for me football was fun but I would never tell a young player because I, honestly and this is what people say to me bro um, I was I was lucky enough to have Zico the Brazilian some of the young players will not know him but you know Zico mm. he was probably one of the best footballers in a football history you know yeah. and I had Roberto Carlos as my coach I had two guys who used to play for black uh, Blackpool, uh, Blackburn. So I had all different managers 
Uh, even Sir Bobby, there's interviews that I find and him talking about me. So um, when I went to Newcastle, one thing Sir Bobby did, he gave me three videos to watch and learn. He gave me Ronaldo, phenomenal. He gave me Pele and he gave me Maradona. That's how, that's how, how highly he saw me, like my technical, like gifted wise, technical side. So he wanted me to learn them and so I can put it into my game. So when I went there, obviously, like I said, I was sad. I miss Colchester and I was with these people like who don't, I feel like at that time they don't, they don't care about you because I wanted yeah. to feel that love. Mm -hmm. But it's not that they didn't care, but <clears throat> your class as professional. So yeah. you have to be professional. You, yes, you literally have to change your ways. You have to be more responsible for yourself. Back then I was responsible, but I had people that was looking after me and making me, if I, you know, I could make a mistake and yeah. someone will put me back, like you get the Jeff or Mickey Cook or the Dukes will tell me, you know, the Gregory. So but then he's like, you don't have nothing. And before me and Kieran start getting on really well, but I had the phase that I, it feels like I was in the dark. Right. I, bro, I'm playing, I'm playing Colchester football. Then I didn't go to one. I, it was a big step. Mm. Yeah, massive step, you know. step, so massive step. So, and Newcastle is a big club. Yeah, the fans, are, fans are huge as well, aren't they? You know, that's a. Yeah, to be fair, they're the one is well, they're the one that kept me going because even before playing, they were singing my name, and, and I'll never forget this. My first game against Charlton because I was there, like angry, sad, but probably it was the best coming on. I had, I came on, and I, and obviously it was it was it was big for me as well. Cause remember before me there was Mark Kinsella who the soul post uh, coach yeah, so yeah, yeah, big man. So I took over. So he was playing for Charlton. So for me it's like oh, for me it's like someone said. I remember someone said to me oh, we'll see who's the legend between you two. Yeah. You know, like, who's? So yeah. that that's also when I came on, I was. I'm not in that game. I was just take. I was enjoying. It's like I was playing for Colchester. Yeah, I was yeah. doing. I was doing. But then the game after that, I think that's when the sadness start kicking in. Yeah. You start. You start feeling sad, and I couldn't perform. And you know, it was very difficult for me. You can't, when you're coming on, it's not. And it's not like in Colchester. You know, they, it's not like you're playing those lower division. You're playing people already. It's like before in Colchester, you have to. You take ball, you dribble, you take... But now it's your brain. Your mm. brain is quicker. So yeah. You have to know straight away, before even the ball arrives into your feet, you already know where it's going to go. You already know where. So, if, so I have to learn all that. Yeah. So it's only to the day that Alan Shearer said to me that in training, he goes, wow, you're a magician. <laughs> this boy is a magician. That's when my confidence went. That's when I knew, oh... I, I'm, 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 I'm be right. you know, I deserve to, be, yeah, I deserve to be rubbing shoulders with this, because, then I used, I was so scared. I remember in, fact, I, in the canteen, I used to sit down, I couldn't even eat. All I was doing just, <laughs> just staring around. at Shira. <laughs> I'll just keep staring. I see Shira. I'm seeing Rob Lee. I'm seeing uh, uh what's his name, Warren Bart, and I'm seeing all this. I'm, I'm like, wow, she's even. Yeah. And remember, I was coaches that. The coaches that you knew, Kieran, they were talking about Ipswich, England. So I'm saying Kieran died. So phew, it's like you know, Nobeto Salano. Like, oh my God. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. It's no. So, like, and every time I used to stare at Shiva, you know, when someone look at you, when he, you catch your <laughs> eyes, I look around, like, I turn around. Like, no. So when he did say, when he did say, call me magician, I think that's when I went from there to then. And then Kieran, the guy just took me under his wing, made me realize. Say hey, you're you're unbelievable. You're supposed to be here and this and just and then you know, say Bobby start taking over, like guiding you. And yeah. Nick Wordsworth was there also. So yeah, so it was a big step. But I would, like I said, I never talk about. I would say to I'll say to younger players now, youngers, work hard, discipline, sleep, mm. eat well, because yeah. all this matters. All yeah. this. If I was really disciplined and think. I, I I believe, and people say I, I could have easily play for the Manu and the big team, but I never. It wasn't a dream of mine. Yeah. My dream was just to play at the highest level, so yeah. I can reach my friends and tell them pass my message. And so, sleep, 
football, everything. Football is the be- football is the best job for me in the whole world. Football is the best job, and yeah. and all that, all that you see that later on. The more you give, the more you get out of it. You yeah. don't cheat because when you cheat, you don't cheat the coach. No. You cheat yourself. Yes, yeah, so true. Did you so always, um, Lamana? Did you always feel that you had something to prove through your career? To myself. To yourself. To my- what, yeah. what about your dad? And you know, um. My dad is like my dad, my dad never wanted me to play football. Okay. It's all education, education. And my uncle Ruben, who helped me, he was there, and he was like my dad's right hand man. So he, he was he was like telling my dad, "Oh, like just give him, give him." And if he messed up, he is that's his fault. So yes, I did have not a point to prove to my dad, but just lift. Like I say to you, mom. I had to prove to myself, but at the same time, for me, it was like I said to my friend, I had to. That's That really was my determination, like my friend. Right. I have to make my friend stop doing this illegal stuff, yeah. like getting arrested by the police. I had to. And no, nah, I never I never saw my dad as a, as a, no, nah, I always knew, I, like I said, I always knew I was better than him. That's me. <laughs> yeah. I always say to myself, like, I'm better than him. So now nah, I didn't have a bad myself, really. And then just to, to make sure that people that actually push me to be proud of me. Yeah, that's what I wanted him, just to be proud. Yeah. Yes. Proud of me. And did you get that? Yes, I did. Good. Because, like, you know, later on, we started, like, my dad's dream was to play for the national team. He didn't do that. So I, his dream, I gave him his dream. Yeah. By playing for the national team. So we always used to say, laugh, and he used to say he was better than me and this. And rest in peace, he's no longer here. But I used to say to him, yeah, my dad was really quick. Right. I say, yeah, he was quick, a little bit of technique. But I say to him, I, I, your technique and my technique, there's no match. I <laughs> I was born with it. I said to him, I was Took it off him, didn't you? <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy because, you know, like sometimes, like after the game, someone will say to me, how did you do that? Or in training, if you say to me, do this, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> I really don't know how to... Is like something that came just instinct. Yeah, that's right. Don't forget, you're talking. I'm talking not only about my little brother there, Angela, was unbelievable as a young player. When yeah. Andrew was young, was unbelievable, was very tricky, very technique, you know. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, and sometimes someone said to me, "Teach me this," but really, you know, if you, like if you ask a, a gift, because I said this, this. I'll say there's two different skills or type of players. Like you said, Messi, for example, I'll give you this generation. You say Messi, or I just say older. So you say Maradona and Pele. They are two different skills. Mm-hmm. The drip, two different dribbling skills. Messi can run like this, but Messi's not, skills are not the same as Ronaldinho or Neymar, for example. Yeah. yeah. You understand? <clears throat> so, uh, so that's what me was like. What, it was easy for me when you give me the ball to turn, I have to do a skill. But if you told me do a simple, I couldn't do it. No. Yeah. Me, it, it Fast. Was, I'm looking at it, I'm thinking it's boring, but it was easy for me to turn around doing skills. Yeah. So it, 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 so, it was like certain things like, and skillful player, like gifted players, you know, skillful player, if you ask a skillful player, he tells you when they have the ball, we don't know what to do unless a defender moves. We need a defender to make a move for us to, 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 to go yeah. past. If a defender don't move, we we'll still be there with the ball. As you can see, they say now they used to say I keep the ball too. but I'm waiting for a defender to but so yeah, so I I always believe in myself. I always knew I didn't have no pressure but myself and like, to improve to become better and 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 just to be an entertainer really and to make my country proud. Yeah. When I I, I was in the Premier, I wanted to make I wanted to make my country proud but making my name that when they talk about me and Congo, so you can also give another Congolese because back then there was no, I was probably the first Congolese. To, so I wanted to, sh- to show him that oh, you can actually follow my footsteps. Yeah. So yeah, it was the Well, We'll go on to, to Congo in a little bit. Um, <coughs> Lamar, do you remember the first game you played in Congo? How, how, do they, how do they make your performance so much better? Did you used to do a little bit more harder training? How, how did it work? So, 
I don't know. Like, I, obviously, I, I was lucky enough to play in that generation and this generation. Yeah. And this generation, some of the footballers, like, it's so they they don't really know. I, I think, first of all, for me, if you ask me, I would like them to bring back the, you know, how youth team players used to clean boots and yeah. that's for discipline. Yeah. It makes you realise, be humble. It makes you realise how hard you have to, you know, what you have to do to get that because those elder they will give you the blessing and teach you. And I, I think most of them don't really know what it's like to be like, it's not that they, you ha- every day, Angela, like when I was in, in Newcastle, every day you do extra. Every yeah. day yeah. you stay behind. We used to stay with Alan Shearer doing shooting. You stay with uh, Nobi crossing. Like every we had to do. Even sometimes they give you that option, like, oh, you can go, like, you nah, because it became so automatic. You wanted yeah. to do extra. You yeah. understand? So it's, and, and then they put the food that they give you. You always have someone there to try to talk to you to see if you have any problem because it's all football is not just about playing it's all men because yeah. if you're not good at here you cannot go and perform so they always have someone talk to you to make sure that you're in a good you're in a good path you know so you see that this boy is not heavy because I don't get me don't get me wrong in post in Newcastle <laughs> me and Kieran Kieran Dad said to Kieran Dad took me under his wing not just me he took me Jermaine Jenners uh who was it Amiobi, uh, who was those Bellamy? Like we had a lot of young people. Woodgate, we had so many. So, but Kieran took us under his wing. But Kieran, at the same, Kieran was unbelievable player. He's probably one of my top five best footballer I played. And but right. Kieran was wild as well. He was young, yeah. he always young. So Kieran yeah. also did things. I was following him. I was following everything. Kieran. So I did a lot of mistakes. But yeah. that's when uh, Sir Bobby had to come down and. Put his foot, you know, what I mean, put his foot on the run and say, "Hey, be careful! I didn't bring you for this. You're an unbelievable player. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I want to." He end up schooling you, teaching you, so you start realizing it's it's really important to, like I said, I I'm not because I, I didn't do that thing. I didn't do most of the things. I was lucky enough for my feet to bless me, but I won't tell a young player. Like, like I said, if I did do that. I would have probably be somewhere higher. You understand? Yeah. So yeah. it's better, it's good to be disciplined, to sleep well, do extra training. You're not cheating yourself, man. You, you know, you it, it all come handy. You know, in the future, mm-hmm. you you read the story about Cristiano Ronaldo. He told you what this guy's done to get. It. I wish I did that. You know, yeah. but I still had a great career. I'm still happy I did, but I could have done more. So for young players, work extra hard. Yeah. You know, yeah. be disciplined. Listen, be humble. Humble will take you many places, man. But yeah. hard, hard, very. Because yeah. you never know who's watching you. You never know who's watching you. Ah. Mm-hmm. I play college game. I never even knew. Someone, imagine if I had the mentality of saying, oh, this is how uh, it's kind of boring, I'm not. But I still wanted to do well. And I never knew there was someone there, a scout there who would come and take me to, to, to coach and stuff. So you never know who's watching. Mm-hmm. So this is yeah. what I say to people. When you feel like you're cheating, you know, yeah, you might think, oh, the coach, my coach is not seeing it, but there's someone who's watching you. And if you look at, listen to a story of Ronaldo, Ronaldo, when he was spotted, they say to them, whoever's going to score a goal, that will take him. And they came to see another person, but that person didn't want to take the shine, so he ended up giving it to him. So there's always someone there looking, man. Yes. So work very hard. Yes. Uh, Lamaro, also, when you um, played for your country, that must have been a real proud moment for yourself. Do you want to oh. talk, talk a little bit about that and how, and, and how that made you feel? Uh, you know, well, uh, we sat down when we were in, in Newcastle, Sir Bobby and Shepherd, Shep, Freddie Shepherd, the Newcastle uh, chairman back then. He sat us down, me and Yobi, and was, call, was called up for England. I was called up for, and they, they told, they, uh, they said to us that, um, I remember them, Shepherd, or they saying to us, if answer England call, we'll 
country from where, where you know I, I grew up in, in England, but I didn't have my mom. I didn't stay with my mom, so my mom was in Africa. So the only way for me to get to her, you know, because I came with my dad's side of family, so it was very difficult for me to reach my mom's side. So the only way was for me to accept a, a Congolese, my national team call. So when I, I turned it down to go there, but I loved England. England blessed me, gave me the life that I have. But I had to find my mom and my roots. So mm. for me to go and play for the country, I couldn't think twice. I had to go and play and to go and, 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 and meet. And to be fair, wearing that, like I say, my dad's dream was to play for the national team. Just wearing, let alone, like not even a captain the team for 10 years, but just wearing that flag. Yeah. Just wearing that, for me, you Very saw the proud. joy in my dad. I saw the jo- the joy in my dad's face. I, it was like it was just worth a while for me. It was just amazing. Yeah, but it was. Liam, you got a few more questions? Yeah, there's there? a couple more through. Yeah, fantastic. So, um, so we've got um, yeah. Lamana. What is the best goal that you've scored? Do you remember it? Have you got one? For each club? Oh, well, no, we'll be here all day, wouldn't we? <laughs> yeah. But I, you know, I, I say, um, I'll say uh, against, uh, I'll say for coaches that when we played uh, Preston, I think it was Preston. Yeah. If I'm not mistaken, I got the ball. I think Joy, I think Joy Keith played the ball. I was on, I was in, uh, it was in my uh, own half. So I took it from my side, header it, and raised it. Because remember, why it's so good? Because back then, Preston was top of the league. Okay. So, and and we wasn't. So you know, we was fighting for relegation. So I took the ball from my side, our uh, own half, run, and went past two, 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 one, two. I think three players and the keeper, and left for, I'll say this one. I remember that all the time. So, Fantastic. Yeah. Question. Good stuff. And we've got, um, we've got another one more here. Is, um, who was the best player? This is a good one. Who's the best player who you've played with and also who's best you played against? And Tony. Would you? Okay, so when you said best player, I'll, my, the person I look up to was... I always wanted, but I wanted to play like him. What I learned from him in Tokyo is Ronaldo, phenomenal. And if you say played with, but it wasn't. It was like a charity game. He, he invited me to one of his charity games. Okay. So I was on the same pitch as him. So would that, that count? That counts. Yeah, it's better than I've done. That counts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah so, but I, I thought it was crazy. You know, I've only been starstruck over two people, two players that made me starstruck. It was David Beckham and uh, Ronaldo. I used to, I remember I told you when I got to Newcastle, Sir Bobby gave me a video to learn about him. So I was studying Ronaldo all the time. So I wanted to, because Ronaldo is like, if you remember back when I was in culture, so when I used to dribble, I used to love dribbling and then wait and dribble, wait. So I learned from Ronaldo, when you dribble, you're gone. You see me and you don't see me. Right. So I, I, I put this into... I put I, I put this into so you, I remember when I when I was I was invited uh, to that charity game and I I bought myself a camera I said yeah <laughs> get to take a picture with someone I look up to uh, you know someone so so excited I was excited that's when I'm in Olympia I'm playing for Olympia of course I was I, I took one of my team my teammates came with us so I said to him bro this camera you're gonna take take all the all the ca- take even 50 pictures. Just don't just keep taking pictures. When you see me next to him, don't stop. So when we, when we go there, I had the camera, so I didn't hand it into him because he was also a player. So the camera was like behind me. I put it into one locker. So Ronaldo came, my friend. Bro, I, I, I froze. I couldn't move. I, I couldn't I couldn't move like my, my leg become numbed. My my butt my butt stuck to the, the, the bench. It's like I, I really literally I couldn't move. Man. I couldn't say the guy say hey, the guy say just wave have at him. Ever, have, you had, have you ever had this thing that when someone talks to you or you ever had a dream that you actually say hi but your voice doesn't come out? 
you're, you're, you're basically, so you're basically miming. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, I went back. Yeah, all I all I got back from that was like, to this day, just I played with him, but I didn't have no images, nothing. <laughs> I didn't even you. I I remember going back. I was so mad at my friend. I was saying, "Yo, you what? You didn't even take no one picture. <laughs> You're so crazy." See, and then my friend said, "Yeah, but you didn't give me the camera." I said, "But you could have come and get the camera." <laughs> so I was going mad. <laughs> but it was, uh, for me, Ronaldo. Yeah. But if you talk about playing with someone on the pitch, like as a teammate, <clears throat> I probably would say there were so many. I say to Kieran Dyer was probably one of the best players I play with. I say. Uh, like Alan Shearer, I'll, I'll say not the best, but the best finisher I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. I saw, yeah. you know, it was unbelievable. But the best player that used to make me say, wow, I'll say probably say Yakubu. Okay. Really? I'm going to say Yakubu, say wow, because I remember I didn't know him. He came from nowhere. And to yeah. take in a premiership, he was scoring every year, he was scoring more than 10 goals. And it wasn't easy to play in a Premier League. Mm, yeah. so he took it. He, he like he he wasn't dribbling like me or technique like me. But when I say it was one of the best, his his strength was unbelievable. Yeah, Chira was, was very powerful. Right? I, I didn't think I can see someone who's stronger than Chira because I when he's got his back on goal and the ball's there, nobody can. When the, he's got the ball, he's I put my hands elbows in. He's all elbows up as well. He's. Yeah. So, but but then I end up going, I end up seeing Yak. But Yak, Yak wasn't, uh, he didn't do no bodybuilding because we never like gym. Okay. I never, I didn't go gym because I did my, I was lucky enough to do my gym when I did it with uh, doing my gymnastics. So we did, we had a different training that will make us strong and a balance. Yeah. Yeah. Yak, yeah, he's like, Yak was so, he was so strong, yeah. quick. And uh, even when he was taking penalties, I never thought he would score penalties. But I, he had a funny way of taking penalties. I, I never used to look. When there was penalties, I never looked. <laughs> I, look for that. Yeah. I never thought he would score penalties, but he always used to score. So he, he for me, was like, for me, it was like, raw. And he was a hard worker, man. Yeah. Uh, Lamar, obviously, um, there'll be a lot of children watching and watching you play. Um, what What would you say to them? They've got a dream of becoming a professional football player. What's the main main aspects you'd say to make sure that you, you do to, to try and get that dream? Just talent alone will not make you will not take you far. I, I was lucky to have like gifted in talent, but I was lucky enough to meet people that even though later on they pushed me to to make sure you work hard. So talent will not get you. You gotta do the other side. You gotta like I say, discipline. Discipline yourself. Sleep early. Eat eat really good. Eat good food for your body. Um, train hard. Train. This is what I learned from Bellamy. Bellamy trained the way he played. Yeah. Train the way you play. Because if you cheat in training, it will show in a game. So train the way you play. Work hard. Discipline. Listen to your coaches. Listen is very important. No talk, listen. Mm. And put it all together. It's not hard. <laughs> and yeah. you will you will, you know, and, and believe in your dreams and you will get there. Don't don't feel disappointed. Everybody makes mistakes. Messi, Ronaldo, they yeah. all makes mistakes. But when you make a mistake, it's what you do after that. Mm. Yeah. Have that winner mentality. I will work hard. So hundred percent. I think um Go on, go on, yeah, I was going to say, so just before we go into the foundation stuff, which is really important, I'm really keen to chat to you about that. Um, something that came up with is a question last week, which I think, Andrew, hopefully we carry this through. What's the best practical joke you've either done or seen in football? Yeah, I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we should be asking great. Lamar this one. <laughs> <laughs> Involves Angelo's house. <laughs> um... <laughs> Dukes used to Dukes used to trick me a bit. There's a lot. Dukes actually, actually we used to be fun with Dukes, Lucky, all of them. But um, it's Andy Griffin. Like Woodgate and Andrew Griffin was the worst, the worst. You know, like 
I don't know how I'm going to try to put it in a good way. <laughs> but, um, yeah, good man, Lamar. Uh, we, I'll say, I'll say Andy Griffin was and, and Woodgate was crazy at doing these things because <laughs> I don't know if I can say it because they're kids, but okay. what he used to do, Andy Griffin, everybody used to be scared of him because like, he, he'd take jokes because, you know, back then we used to, like, if someone wear bad shoes or bad clothes, we used to rip up the clothes and hang it up. <laughs> and we had one player, we had one player, Michael Chopper, and when you do all this thing, because Andy Griffith used to always have bad, he didn't, he has a bad dress in sense, but you don't touch his clothes because Andy Griffith is crazy. <laughs> like, literally, he's a crazy man you don't mess with. So, <laughs> so Andy, Michael Chop end up, <laughs> end up ripping, because um, Andy and Woodgate was so together, like on joking, so he end up ripping uh, Andy Griffith's like, clothes and and I think uh, we would get sold that, so we would get sold Andy Griff. <laughs> Andy came go, put down. Nobody will talk, so Andy Griff say, okay. So we'll sit in there, all of us. So he went out. I think he went in the toilet. And then and went in the toilet, then they pulled pull in his hand. <laughs> and then he just went. And then he just came to Chopper and just put it, up, put it on Chopper's face. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, they are never good. <laughs> So, so then nobody, nobody, nobody could have messed with Andy Griffin. All the, the, all the older players are the Andy um, Shearer also and uh, Leigh Gary Speed, rest in peace. Uh, the all used, all the players used to like, you know, when you travel, you play away games in a hotel. You see someone knock on your door, they'll come in and just jump you. <laughs> you won't even know what you won't know what happened. So you suddenly like you're sitting there. And then you you're playing your game or watching game because you, you play Sonic or Mac. You just hear door knock and like you used to share rooms. You see a group of older players that would just come in and then just or get a bottle of water and just chuck it. <laughs> and you just start jumping, you're banging. So they'll run out. And then suddenly you sit there and say, What just happened? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what is, yeah. what is, there were so many things. You know, there were so many. Say Bobby Robson used to uh, say Bobby. <laughs> You know, say so Robbie used to come in a training ground and then he'll tell it, he'll give the players instructions like, do this, the player can't do it. He'll say, I'll oh, give me the ball. He'll take the ball, pull it on the floor, and just before kicking the ball, he'll pull his muscle, you know, he'll be like, ah, <laughs> <I'm so screaming." laughs> the, the next day, you'll see him coming in with the, you know, them, you know them golf car, you know them golf car when you're going to play golf. Yeah, so so he yeah, so he would come in in golf car because he couldn't because he couldn't walk uh, like walk because he put down his hands. So he would start screaming from the sideline with his golf in the golf car. And then a week a week later he will come back. A week later he will come back in training in grand getting that he just came back from injury like put a muscle and then he was trying to get the ball put on the floor and then he kick it go ah, ah, ah. So he was you know, literally just pulling over his <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic times, amazing times. Oh, one time, one time, I one time with Harry. Harry was the best. Harry is the most. Funny he loves the joke, didn't he? And, uh, Harry and Ian Holloway, they're funny people. <laughs> funny people. I, I remember one time I, I was injured. Harry left us and then came back. Uh, he went to Southampton and then came back. Uh, but they. Ch- Change, you know, he changed what we're supposed to meet. When we're traveling, we had to meet somewhere so we can jump on the bus and we can all go. So we had to pick him up on the way. So I was injured. I just came back. So I didn't know they changed the place. So I was sitting in the old place waiting for the bus. But the bus was a so I was late. So they called me. They said, where are you? I said, well, I'm here waiting for you guys. They said, oh, we're no longer there. So I, I, so I end up going to meet the bus. But... When we meet the bus, we have to go and pick up Harry. Remember, we're supposed to get on a bus in half an hour, pick up Harry. So it took me half an hour. So literally, Harry was standing for an hour. <laughs> so when he came on, he came on a bus. He was angry, mad. You know, Harry, you know, twitching, goes, what the hell is going on? Why are you guys late? And then the guy said, well, it's Lua. He goes, Louis, again? He goes, come here. I said, hey. he goes, why are you late? I said, Gaffer, I did not. He goes, yeah, 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 one of these ones again. You got me standing there like a bloody lemon. <laughs> 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 so I said, Gaffer, I said, Gaffer. 
You never come across someone like Harry, man. Oh, yes, <laughs> man. So <laughs> many stories, Lamana, right? Love it. Fantastic. Uh, too much. So, some, of them I can, I, some of them I can tell you, but it's, it's not good for the kids. No. It's a crazy <laughs> story, but funny, but <laughs> Lang- oh, language out cool. to hide. It's funny <laughs> when you use the language. Uh, uh, <laughs> kids can't really. Lamana, should we... Um... Should we talk about this this uh, serious thing now? Obviously, your foundation. Because I think this will interest so many people. Yes. Do you want to talk a um, bit yeah, about, about, about it? Or? Where did it start? Um, when I first, uh, you know, obviously I grew up here in in England, and my first time to go Africa was in two thousand and two to play uh, a competition. And then after I came back, and then I said, okay, but the competition wasn't in my country, it was in Libya, uh, Mali, sorry. And then I came back, I ended up going, I said, okay, I'm going to go and visit to go and look for my family, my mom, my sisters. So I ended up going 2004, if I'm not mistaken, yes. And then obviously growing up here, the things I saw here was completely different then, you know. So uh, I've seen, uh, I, I went and visit hospitals. And those people that, you know, the hospital was big. There's people, they don't have the same similar things that we have here, where you can go to the, uh, you have your own doctor that you can look after yourself. You can go to the small to get treated. You know, obviously government helps a little bit, but in there, government doesn't help. So I went to hospital, I see some people that's been treated, but they cannot leave the premises because they have not paid money. Wow. And, uh, and then you ask, you ask how much is it? it would be like some of them would be like thirty dollars, fifty dollars. For me, I was looking at sometimes I'm spending this money on buying things that I don't really need. Mm. Yeah. I can really help. And and some of the people there was sick at there, but they yeah, but they can't um they can't pay to get treatment. The doctor will not touch them unless wow. they pay the treatment. So you know, and and mothers who had babies. You know, they've been staying in the, in hospital for about five months, six months, because they can't pay to get back, back home. So this thing was like doing, like really, it was really working me out, you know. Yeah. So I end up going to off, off an age. I'm seeing kids who probably have a place they are not being looking after well. They're still going outside doing like whatever they do, thief and do. And then they also come so... Going to eldest people home, not like the same here. The government don't pay. They mm. need people to help them. So all that started really getting to me, like saying to me, um, hold on, thank you. Hold on. Um, in, in, in London, all these little things we take it lightly that a five band can actually save someone's life. Yeah. Band can actually do. And obviously, I, I, that's when I started in 2004. I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to set up my own... Uh, foundation to try to help those people yeah and uh, and i said uh, but i did it quietly i didn't want nobody because it's something that i hold it was in my heart that I, yeah i had to do but then someone was telling me that um when i saw when i started doing it, so so what i was doing in the country they actually asked asked me to be an ambassador for him so i started mm-hmm. working with them going to to, to be a voice for to be a voice for the kids vaccination to make sure that they're healthy. I worked with them for about two years because normally you stay with them two years and then they have to change another person. But they saw what I was doing so good because I gave my time voluntary work. So they gave me another. So I stayed with them for four years and then uh, and then they also I became like an ambassador for the country for environment. But I'll start seeing a lot of things. I'm seeing kids like I'm seeing a lot of poverty. You know, Africa is. Yeah. There's no middle. There's people have it and people don't have it. And people yeah. look really down on people who doesn't have it. So I, it, it wasn't sinking into my head. Yeah. You know, so I, I, that's why I came up with this foundation, helping people. I've been doing that, supplying things for hospitals, su- supplying things for uh, orphan, orphanage and all these people. And I realized, okay, every day, I go back to Europe, I come back in the orphanage side, you see three or four kids, people die, and some parents, some yeah. people who were not being treated, because when you go to hospital, I cannot pay for them, so I had to do, yeah. like, uh, choosing, you get each person, each parent, I have a, net, a number, 
So you know when you have to choose. So you have to choose 50 people to pay for the trip to 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 start. There will still be more people. So and then you come back. You said I'll come back after. When you come back, you you hear all these people passed away. Wow. And so it's really really sad for me. Yeah. That's when I thought, okay, you know, I'm gonna try. Me on hand, I can try to help, but I can't save everyone. Yeah. So I'm gonna try to get other people involved. Maybe my my ten instead of me giving ten, my ten can be twenty, can double it. So that therefore, it can instead of fifty, it can be hundred people, and and more people come in, we can help save more lives. Yeah, you know. So this is why I came up with this, and, and now you know I figure out with the kids side. I thought, okay, these kids are not getting education, so let me try to the biggest project. I said one thing I can ever leave. I always pray to God. But if today I'm not here, one thing I can leave in my country is a legacy by for those youngsters, a place to stay, but not just a place to stay, yeah. but they can learn. Yeah. It'll be a certain age until they reach 18. And when 18, they can, you know, 18, 19, they're old enough to go outside and face the world. So yeah. they can be prepared. Yeah. Yeah, they can cool. leave there go to school or be education. And teach them how to become a man on a woman's side or learn how to sew, how yeah. to educate. So when they come out of there, just to share love, because if they love our share to them, maybe they can share it to another person. Yeah. Yes. And that's how they change. But this is what I started. I ended up buying the land and uh, I go to the market, everything. Now, as we're talking, because we stopped a little bit for this uh, coronavirus, we start building, like putting a wall around this, so to secure the place. And uh, and I, I, last time I was in in in, uh, in Belgium to see Bella. So, so I'm having all this trying yeah. to get these people with good heart uh, that can give something to help us build this. Because it's not just about Lua's place; it's something that will stay forever and will go on to help youngsters. You know, so it's everybody's place. Anybody that has something to come and teach will be able to come there. So this is why I'm, I'm launching now um, the foundation to let people know what we're doing. But now I've, I've, launched, uh, I've launched like a, an appeal for people with good hearts to, to, raise, to help people. Because, again, like I said, this ain't nothing to do with the, the orphanage. The orphanage people, I stopped a little bit because people would know letter because I don't want people to get confused. Okay. So what we have, the pill we've done now to raise money to help people back home in the sun because uh, I've been contacted from some politician people that are trying to tell me to ask me to be a voice by telling people not to go, go outside, you know, to look. How do you tell these people to not go outside yeah. a person that has empty stomach, mm -hmm. doesn't yeah. have food? Yeah. So how can I do that? You know, so it's very difficult. So, um, so I figure out, okay, I'm gonna try to find to raise money and trying to help a little bit of people. That even if I say, uh, if I say to them, don't go outside, and some people say, yeah, but we don't, and I can give them a place that, okay, go in there. There'll be certain food there for you to to yeah. get, but stay home after that. Mm. Yeah, you understand. So, and <clears throat> and then find some because. In Africa, they're not telling people the truth uh, about these things. Uh, and I spoke to someone here that they find the kit that you can actually do your test to find out if you have it or not. Okay. Yeah. Which they don't have it yet in Africa. So I spoke to someone. Uh, he had a. Uh, he told me that he might have thirty thousand of it, and he gave me he gave me a good price to get it. So with yeah. a little bit of that, we can take it to buy it to send it to people. There is an orphanage and some. Uh, uh, hospital, you know them corner hospitals that, yeah. excuse me, that they can actually test people, and that's what we're doing. So wow. it's there for everyone. You know the the site, the foundation site is www.luwaluwafoundation.org. You know, um, yeah. we're and, gonna um, um, with the site. With uh, while while you've been talking, we've just been playing. We've been playing the site, so anyone that's watching the video or watching live, they can see the site and see so all of the contact can, details. So they can and donate anything sometimes the clothes when we take it back to give to those kids it was just just trying to get i think you know this is my happiness i think even when i started playing football when i i like somebody to go back home remember what i did i like 
someone to be and uh, and 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 doing this you know i always say that if i don't do football this is what i want to do to be yeah. able to, you know <clears throat> when i was in Newcastle, if i went even in uh, in uh, turkey in uh, in uh, in greece but when i was in newcastle there was a boy that was dying with cancer and uh they gave him actually they gave him like a month to leave and the family this boy i was one of his favorite players and the family was finding a way to contact me the boy's last wish was to but i wasn't back then i wasn't really looking at my <clears throat> my post back then so mm-hmm. now and then you look at it but it happened that day I, I thought okay let me just go through so i saw a letter i saw the same i saw about 10 letters of the same person and they told me they told me he was in the hospital and certain so <clears throat> i went and surprised them oh, so yeah. i went there just out of the blue i saw it, it was shock and it, and then I start end up coming, so I find out the case of the boy. I end up start coming, and this is what touched me. And this is what sometimes I say: you're a role model to someone you don't know. It doesn't have to be someone in your family that you're a role model to. Anybody, someone's looking up to you, like you. But if you messed up, they messed up. Yeah. So if they say, "Oh, Romana did this, I can do that," yeah. and there's Angelo did, the coach did this, so you did. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's so <laughs> I want to see this boy. I start end up. In all the time, and I even bought a computer. I bought, uh, I think back then it was like Super, Super Nintendo. So I'm like, yeah, Super yeah. Nintendo. So, so I was there. So we was playing games, and but I was there for a long time. Remember, they told him that I didn't even know because the day I had to move, like to go to coaches, that the family was crying. So I didn't know why they're crying, and but obviously, obviously later on. I, find that he passed away but when I got in touch with the family they keep saying thank you to me I say why they say we don't know if you knew or not but he had a month to leave but you yeah. come in there all the time you was there for like, like that long it's like the boy leave for that long he lived wow. longer than what the doctor said so yeah. for me it was like it gave me like it gave me shivering so it yeah. made me it, you kind of realize that certain power that you have and you use whatever you have in a good way and for me to go like i go in congo i go some places someone look at you say wow it's lower and i still don't get it to this time right like, i don't get it don't get me wrong because it's never thinking to my head that i'm a footballer I'm a, it never sinked into this day so when i get that it's like oh why and it makes me shy it's like why are they looking at me like this why you know why but i get it i get it out in the public eyes and some people they only see you on TV they don't see you so and this is my way of giving something back it's not just because in Africa if it was here in, in England I'll do the same thing yeah, yeah. England also England also is my home because without England I probably wouldn't be have what I have mm. so yeah. you know uh, and I always try to help us as much and I just feel like they need more than what we need they need that guidance yeah. and what we need because Future, the kid, the, you know, I, I do a lot of kick uh, racism, kick racism out. I do it because I see those youngsters. They need, we need to get at them at a young age to know that we're all in a one way. Yeah, there's no color issues, you know. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, so that's all I do. Wow. And do you get out there much? Have you, have you obviously not at the moment with everything going on, but do you manage to get out there to to see the work that's happening? Uh, and I'm all all the time in uh, in uh, in Congo. Wow. All the time in Congo. Uh, so I'm all the time in Congo, and I'm uh, trying to every little time off I get. Now that I have even more time, I do go as much as uh, as much as I can. You know, so, so trying to see how things work. Trying, literally, like if you take football away, this is my happiness. Yeah. Making putting a smile on someone's someone else's face. That makes me. That makes my heart happy. Yeah. So it's really part of me. So it's something that, regardless, by God's grace, I'll I'll do it. I have to do this. So yeah. Yes. Uh, Lamano, you obviously um come to the SES Academy, and you was telling me that you were, you're looking to to set up your football academy at the foundation as well, giving yeah. giving them opportunities yes. to footballers out there, similar to what you've had, yes. and bringing them over to England. Do, do you want to mention a little bit about yeah. that? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, it's also part of the foundation, also because it's telling me to to set up. And I, like I, I spoke to Ange and I say to him because I play 
in football, and I don't know. I, sometimes in life, sometimes yeah, honesty is the best thing. I will not turn around and say, yeah, I know how to run academy like Ange does. I don't. I played, I was a footballer. All I knew was football. Mm. And then I got used to, you know, lo- loving doing this charity stuff. It's become part of my passion as well. But I'm still a footballer. I cannot, it'll be, it'll be uh, selfish of me not to pass on my knowledge to yeah. a younger, what I knew about football to a younger person, not to mentor a younger person. So, you know, I, I thought, okay, let me set up, since I'm going to, at the moment, it seems like I have <clears throat> jobs in Congo. I'm going to spend more time there. Why not build an academy mm-hmm. yeah. to also help him football-wise and, and some of the kids also in a, in a foundation, the, the orphanage, they can come and train and do things. So basically, yeah, that's what we're trying to do, build that. But obviously, I have to speak to Ange more because he knows how to set it up. And together we can try to do something there Fantastic. that will help. It will be a link to that. You know, trying to produce. Like I had the opportunity to 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 have that help from Jeff to bring me to give me that. Why not also me pass it on to another with along with my with the people that I know because I came there and I saw what Angie is doing. Amazing, really amazing. And not only because he's here, you know, I was shocked because you know you have to understand. Ange is like my little bro. I'm not Ange. Like He's a big boy now, isn't he? Baby. <laughs> yeah. So it's like for, for me, like Ange used to be blonde. He used to have this hair like, like Bex. You know, like <laughs> hair Bex. So I, yeah. you see, because I know him, like, you know, I, I know him with blonde hair. And then, I, and then his hair has changed. So, you know, for you, you don't understand. It's so nice to see your brother doing so well, because that's how I see Ange. I don't see him as my mate. I see him like my little bro, you know? So <laughs> it's so nice to see, you know, like he turned out to be a, the boy, the, the man that he's turned out to be now is unbelievable. And giving something back, working with the likes of Dukes, you know, he's always so you in good hands and giving other youngsters the opportunity to become coach. Like I say to him, you know, I see him one day. Why not? He in, 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 in coaches, that, you know, like actually yeah. working and helping coaches because I would like, to, I'll tell you, I would like to come back in coaches and work with kids or as a mentor. So I would love to do that, you yeah. know. So, but I would love that if I see Angie's days so, on. There's people who love the clubs, you know. Yeah. There's, there's people who's born for that club, you know what I mean? So, and hope, even if the club can have that with, uh, with, with the, with the Angie's academy. Really good, so yeah, fantastic. Listen, I think. Uh, do you want to do one more question, Lee? Or are we all good? Yeah, I think we've most of them are through. Um, I was the only the thing I was going to end with, Lamar, is what's next for you, mate? What's your plans? Obviously, the charity. What, what else? At the moment, at the moment, I, I'm a coach. Which I'm doing. I, I'm, I'm with the national. I'm attackers coach. Okay. So I work with the attackers, and uh, uh, I'm just learning my trade and. I'm here in England um, trying to do my coaching as well to better myself, just to learn more. And, um, yeah, this is what I'm doing. And obviously meeting people, because obviously COVID-19, I stopped. But I was going around meeting, trying to get registered, get there, because the charity was registered in, in Congo, but now I want to register here. So I can have that charity number to try and to help us get a, bit, a little bit more of a help from people. So I'm speaking to different people, just trying to, to um to really trying to raise these things to build this thing because building this thing is a, it's probably be the biggest achievement that I ever do. Yeah, to build this academy, uh, build this center orphanage. So that's who I am now. But I'm now we are home, staying home. You're safe. Sad with what's happening. Sad what's happening, you know. But at the same time, you know these things we got to look at. I think it's it's reflection time for all of us. Yeah, really. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I think like sometimes there's so many people who's caught up in just work, 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 and you forget you forget your loved ones. You know, yes. um, for our, for me, I say okay, people turn around and say this, but it's fifty fifty in a way. It's bad that we're losing people, the loved ones, some people. You oh. itself the pollution. The earth is cleaning itself. Uh, we, we're getting to know, we're getting to understand and love. You know, I, I, like my, me for personally, I've been traveling so many places 
and my wife is there. It's only now I start realize, raw. My wife work hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not easy being and home, is it? You have to feed the kids. You have to clean the house, and you have to make sure that I eat. You have to, and you know. So I've learned all these things I didn't really appreciate, but now I start learning. So it's like I say, it's reflection for all of us coaches. You're trying to see how you can better yourself, how you can improve yourself. So. It's, like I say, it's a 50-50 situation, but whoever's still alive, let's just do what they're doing. Let's clean yeah. our hands. Let's stay safe. Yeah. Let's help each other. I miss I miss hugging my friends. I miss seeing uh, my friend or seeing Angel hugging. Love, yeah. that's love between you. But, and now we can't do that. Even when we come out, it's all about social distance. So, yeah. But let's try to be safe and hopefully together we can try to beat this. Get back to Whatever it. Corona is, yeah. Yeah. I feel like, you know, tonight has been such a great insight, Lamano. Uh, probably Thank a lot you. bigger than you probably think. But yeah. it's good for people to know that the man behind you, you know, the, the different things you do. There's so many footballers out there that, that do so many amazing things in different countries. Yeah, too much. And, yes. and trust me, mate, I'm very, very proud of what you've <coughs> done as well. So I appreciate you coming on. You really do tonight. Thank you. Yeah, fantastic. Great job. And, I, and, I, and I'll be coming again. Obviously, when football come back again, when we come, we'll be able to start training. I'll come back again. You'll see me with Ange, and I'll be learning my trade day as well. So. Yeah, and if we can help with anything with this foundation, then, then we'll, uh, love, we'll love to. Be good. Take care. Kids. Make sure you, you work hard. Lots of love. And we'll, see, we'll see each other soon again. Take care. You're a gentleman.